My name is Brian and welcome to Wrench Fest Garage. Today we're back on the ultimate Ford dent side coming. Today we're going to catch you up on what's going on. We've been doing a little bit behind the scenes. So we're going to show you what we've been doing. This is our to-do list to get the Cummins running. We've got the exhaust done, crossed off, steering's done, throttle cable's done. This stuff we still need to do. Plus I had a couple of more that I probably forgot. However, We've got a couple of things done off camera, which is the fuel lines and the clutch. So let me show you what I've done. The clutch assembly on this is from the 99 F450. And the reason that I wanted to use that is because you can go to any auto parts store and you can buy this complete assembly. In fact, it comes as a complete assembly. You can't buy the master and the slave separate that I know of. So that's why I wanted to use the F450 parts. But the problem is, I had to graft it into the 79 cab, so let me show you what I did. This is the clutch pedal out of the 99 F450, and obviously it was never meant to go in the cab of the 79. So I had to make some adjustments to the pedal. Um, I pushed it that way as far as I possibly could against the park brake, and it was still basically kind of over here sitting right next to the brake pedal. So I cut this and re-welded it over here, and in doing that it shortened it. So I had to add a piece right here to lengthen it back out to make everything sit right where I want it to sit. Running the fuel lines on this was pretty easy. We basically had to bypass the fuel pump that came with the F450. This is the fuel pump. It sat down on the frame. The problem with this fuel pump is that it puts out about 60 PSI, which is way too much for the Cummins VE pump. It would just basically blow the seals out of the pump. So we got rid of it and we ran the fuel line from where the pump was up to the Cohen's fuel pump, which is right here. And then all we had to do is hook up the return line and I was good to go. And now you're caught up with what we had going on off camera. So fuel lines and clutch done. What we forgot to add to the list is gauges. We probably ought to have gauges so we know what's going on with oil pressure and temperature when we start running this motor. So I'm gonna add sending units. Another thing we need to add is painting the inner fender wells and the radiator support. When I put that back together, I don't wanna to have to tear it back apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip all the paint off of it and then paint them and then get that all set up so I don't have to do it again. So let's add that to the list. This is the original gauge set that came with the truck, and this is what I want to reuse because it just fits the truck, so why wouldn't you? In order to use that though, I need to change the sending units. So let me show you what I got set up. I had to get a different sending unit. This is the one for the Cummins, so it's obviously not gonna work with the Ford gauges, but this one will. This is for the Ford gauges. The only problem is, is the thread's a little bit different, so pretty easy solution. We just got an adapter. So this adapter will screw on the sending unit, like so, and then it'll screw right into the block. On a 12 valve Cummins, this is where the oil pressure screws into. It is right behind the VE pump, and it is right on the block. So we're just going to go ahead and screw the new sending unit in to this spot. Just like so. No problem. Same deal with the temperature gauge. This is the one that came out of the Cummins. This is the one that needs to go on the Ford. So we got an adapter to adapt that. So the new sending unit will go on the adapter. And this actually goes clear on the back of the head on the driver's side. So it's kind of a hard one to get to a little bit. But we'll just go ahead and screw that in. Tighten it down and we'll be done with that. This is the original gauge set that we showed you earlier. On the back of the gauges, it has this wiring harness. So what we need to do is figure out which wire goes to the gauges, and then we'll run them down to the sending units. It's just gonna be temporary for now until we get the end all be all harness in it, but it will let me know if the truck's overheating and it has oil pressure. On these older instrument clusters, they have a printed circuit board on the back of them. And all it is, is a flat piece of kind of wiring that hooks the gauges to this harness. And you can see it, how it kind of intricately goes through everything right here and how it works. What I'm doing is tracing down the gauges and see where they come out on the wiring harnesses so I can hook it up properly. I'm 
running some temporary wires inside the cab. Temporary, unless it works really good, and then they'll be permanent. No, just kidding. These are going to be temporary until I get the actual harness. So I'm going to run one from the oil pressure and one from the coolant, run them up to the gauges, hook them up, and then hopefully they work. I've hooked up a temporary wire to the oil pressure and just ran it up into the cab and then I'll hook it up to the gauges. I'm going to do the same with the temperature and then we should be good to go. Had this connector just laying around. I'm not sure if it's like the original one for the temp sensor. Anyway, it's going to work. It just pushes right on the temp sensor. I'll run this wire up into the cab and then figure out which gauge it goes to or how that works. Because I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go. It's pretty sketch. If I touch that damn thing one more time, freak out. I really need to spend the time to clean that thing because it's just... What thing? A Hydro Boost. <laughs> I've never cleaned it. I've got some of the wires figured out. This is going to go to battery power and now i got to figure out where this ground wire is going to go. It's going to be yellow. Yellow. So this one goes to yellow. This is the oil pressure wire. And then we got to hook up the, i got to find me another butt connector. So that one will be the temperature. Okay. It's in, but we won't know if it works till we start the truck. But it's another thing we can check off the list. One more thing off the list. It is time to fill up the oil. When we drop the pan on this, we completely drain the engine, so we better put some in it. This is my high dollar funnel. You can't get these anywhere. This is my high dollar funnel that I made right here in Wrenchfest Garage. And Garage Fest Garage, Wrench Fest Garage, Garage. Garage, Wrench Fest. Garage. Subscribe, <laughs> RN! Ooh, that's clean oil. Usually in these diesels, when you pull the dipstick out, it's black, black, even after you just changed it. Okay, we're just below the full. We're gonna leave it there for now. We'll start it, run it, check it again. One more thing to cross off the list. Yay! This is the passenger side fender. We're gonna prep it for paint. We're gonna strip all the paint off using chemical stripper. See how that goes? I've never actually used that. This fender's got some issues. It's got a little bit of surface rust going on right here, but nothing crazy. I think that'll grind off, it'll be fine. But this fender's also been wrecked and repaired. So you can see right there where they've drilled a bunch of holes to pull it out with a slide hammer and then they just bonded over it. But it'll be good enough for this truck. So we'll strip it, see what it looks like. Clear cut. We put the paint stripper on it. We've let it set for 15 minutes. Now let's see if it did anything. I think all I'm doing is scratching it, scratching it. It's not what I wanted to happen. That's not a good sign. Well, that didn't do nothing, so we're gonna hit it with another coat and let it sit a little longer and see what that does. While we're waiting for that paint stripper to hopefully do its thing, we can start working on these inner fender wells, get them stripped, get them ready for paint. Whoa!
this is the inner fender on the passenger side and this is where the battery sits and over the years battery acid has just basically spilled out of the battery and it's ate away all this metal here so i need to either replace the whole thing or patch up this metal right here cut it out weld a new piece in i priced it out it's about 270 bucks delivered to my house so i'm cheap and i think i'm just going to go ahead and fix this this should be fine it's just an inner fender well nobody's really ever going to see it especially because it's going to be underneath the battery so we're going to go ahead and fix it what i'm doing here is putting some tape down so i can cut a straight line because when you go to patch this it's just a whole lot easier to work with straight lines than it is with crooked lines so I'll lay this tape down and then I'll use this as a marker to grind or cut. So I'll cut all this out and then I'll start patching the new piece in. I got this all tacked in. I'm pretty happy with it. The metal actually on the old fender is holding up pretty good. I'm not blowing through it like I thought I would. So we're gonna go ahead and run with this. I will finish up, make it a complete weld, just a little bit at a time so it don't warp and call her good. That's about all we're gonna get done today. Hopefully next time we'll be shooting some paint on those inner fenders. We'll be that much closer to getting it running and driving. Thanks for watching. So got rid of that fuel pump and then just are you kidding me? <laughs> Dewey! Uh, Dewey Dewey. Caddis interrupt us. Dude, I don't even like you. <laughs> this is the meanest cat that ever lived. Uh -huh.